And welcome into a Hump Day edition of the Backstage Pass. Of course, Hump Day is just two more days until we get to the weekend, which is always fun out there. Uh, Brandon Morrill here, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, easyliquor.com. Get the bottle sent directly to your doorstep. And our good friends at mitchmax.com for official Backstage Pass merchandise, including these coffee mugs we just got into as well. So make sure you go grab one of those and uh, drink some good morning beverages out of that too, or afternoon beverages or whatever you do. And then our good friends over at HankJuniorProductions.com documenting a lot of cool things, the podcasting and just photography, videography. Our good buddy Henry Herrera does it all down there in Florida. In fact, he's capturing a lot of cool uh, music festivals. For you guys tuning in today, we do have a special treat. Uh, we just got back from Nashville with our good friends over at CRS and of course our friends at Full Circle Moments, uh, which is a great event planning company out there. Big show coming up April 2nd at Pedrati's in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you get to see uh, Rick Trevino and Wade Hayes uh, perform their tails off there at Pedrati's, where I got married there 11 years ago, too. But uh, we'll have some trivia questions to give away. And, of course, if you want to win you a, a four-pack of tickets, uh, two tickets from each artist, a prize pack from each artist, and a meet-and-greet with Wade Hayes, uh, you'll have to answer this question toward the end of the show. But I want to play and bring on our guest after all the house cleaning was done there. Uh, she's a fantastic artist. She came out of the womb singing. I got to read that somewhere, too, at the same time, which is great. And she's known for playing every instrument there is in her arsenal. And she's infectious. Her smile shows it. Uh, Rachel Stacy here on the program. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? It's it's busy. See, that's a lot of the top sponsors, giveaways, all the good stuff there. So I, it's... I mean, I, I just want to come hang out with you. I just come hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be good out there, no doubt. Hey, let's talk about how you got started in this thing, too, because uh, I know you've, you've done a lot in this industry, no doubt, for a long time. And uh, you describe yourself as a songwriter and, you know, playing so many instruments. What attracted you to music from a young age? Oh, gosh, I get asked this all the time, you know, and sometimes it, it changes because of memories. But, you know, my mother was a musician. And so she I would watch her play guitar and piano and do her thing. And, um, I, I used to go to her shows with her. I was three years old mm -hmm. and, um, I would carry, she was child labor by the way. So I carry her tip <laughs> jar, I'd carry a tip jar and go around and be adorable. And now I look back and I'm like, dang, she must've been raking it up. <laughs> so I would go to these bars with her. Uh, she did what they called the holiday in circuit. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I'd go to these places with her and I'd be her little tip girl or I'd, I have fond, yet vague memories of being in some of these places. And, um, but I remember looking at her on stage and just going, wow, I want to do that when I grow up. And um, so my dream was to be a professional musician. I should have put rock star, <laughs> but I, but my, it was, she played piano. She did it all. And at about, um, I think six, I mm -hmm. went to school and they had meet the orchestra day. And oh, okay. so I, being the lazy little kid, actually I wasn't, I was super hyper, <laughs> but I walked in and they, they were showing all the instruments and I went to the smallest instrument that wasn't a horn. It was the violin. And I literally walked right to the violin and went, ah, take this home. So I took it home <laughs> and just like a, you know, good music. Mother's like, oh my gosh, my mom, my daughter's going to play music. My mom played upright bass, piano, saxophone, uh, guitar, mm -hmm. everything. And just like she went and bought me the best violin, the best everything, you know, at the time, because she was so excited. But when she when I brought it home, she was kind of like uh, violin, you know, and the next thing I know, I don't, I don't know. It just kind of streamlined from there. And um, I really never knew, I, I, you know, I tell you part of my story is, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I that we I grew up in a very uh, tumultuous home, if you will, behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. I truly believe that music was brought in my life to change to distract me and maybe to help someone down the line, you know? So it's like, it was, it saved me, but it also, it was a great distraction, but it was um, something they could actually tell me to go in my room and disappear, you know, while whatever's <laughs> going on. And I, yeah, I play in my instruments. Um, and I, 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 I love to tell part of the story of that. That's even though I did music and it was innate because it was in the family, you know, mm -hmm. I really, truly believe I got into it and I dug into it because it was kind of a, it was like a big bear. It like hugged mm -hmm. me and it was safe, you know? So, but you know, as far as why I continued, I still don't know. It's a hard <laughs> business. I don't know. <laughs> you know, of all those great instruments that you learn how to play, is there kind of a, a favorite one? Cause I've seen you just do some kick-ass 
videos on Instagram and some things you put on socials with the fiddle and the guitar and the piano. Is there one that, that's a favorite over the other? Um, yes. I'm always going to, my fiddle's always going to win. That okay. is my, that's my love. I mean, that's, um, I was a, I was a classical violinist first and, you know, mm -hmm. I got into fiddling much later and, um, I, uh, again, that was, it was just my, it was my whoopee. So, and I started guitar <laughs> later in life and I piano, I've always tinkered around with anyway. I write some of my songs to my piano, but mostly to my guitar, but, um, my violin, if, if you were to say, Rachel, you can only play one instrument, mm -hmm. it'd be violin. And now voice, of course, that's, that's just singing. I've, I've, I used to sing. Okay. I have to tell the story. So I've told it in live shows. My mom said she came home and we lived, she moved to a new neighborhood and I'm sure someone was diabetic. This sounds like I live in a crack neighborhood where I'm getting ready to tell you. But so I, my mom said she came home one day and I had a broomstick and I had taped a syringe, an old syringe I found out down the street like wow. not with the needle in it, of course. Yeah. But if I guess somebody diabetic down the street, but I had taped it and I was standing mm -hmm. up on something. And she says she wishes she could find the picture, but I was holding the broomstick singing to a, a syringe. Wow. <laughs> so I wanted to sing since I was a kid. Like I started very young. I was already singing, but um, if, if I lost everything, my voice, everything, I, I would hope my violin, I have, I have eight violins. I hope <laughs> one of them stuck with me. <laughs> All right, this song went crazy, was number one for you. And I tell you, we're going to ask about this because I know you love talking about it. How Boomerang changed your career and worldwide charts and things like that. And, of course, other hits out there, too, at the same time. But that's one that stuck with me and stuck with a lot of people out there and just country music fans in general. I mean, you still get goosebumps talking about that song? I do because of the whole story behind it. And, you know, if you knew, like, okay, so Dan Mitchell, Sean Gassaway, and I, I, I always, he's going to kill me. It's, it's always the third writer, whatever. So when the song was, you know, um, submitted to me, or I was told mm -hmm. I need to come sing this song and I flew to Nashville to do it. Um, I didn't know the history behind it. So Dan Mitchell is the guy who wrote, if you're going to play in Texas, you got to have fiddle in the band. Mm -hmm. So here I am with my songwriting team and all the guys and I am literally playing for the guy who wrote, if you're going to play Texas, you got to fiddle in the band. Here I'm a fiddle player in Texas. <laughs> anyway, Dan Mitchell, and shortly after he started managing me for a little bit, you know, he, God rest his soul, he uh, died a couple years ago. Um, but it was um, going up to Nashville, doing the song, you know, getting back. You never think it go, goes anywhere. You just, you don't. Mm -hmm. And it actually was one of those songs that, I mean, you just, it's a, you know, I go in and it's just a jammer. It's just, oh, it's just such a good song. But it was like um, when Dan Mitchell, when I got done singing that song and he was just kind of nodding his head like this, when I came out from the vocals, he's like, your vocals. Wow. I was mm -hmm. like, it was kind of like, you know, I've sang for so many years and stuff like, and you hear, yeah, you're a great vocalist. Like Lloyd Maines did that to me. And I was just like, oh my God, you can bring, you think I'm good. I thought Natalie's amazing. But it was like, it was kind of one of those pivotal moments in my career where, you know, I know these people have worked with some of the biggest and best artists out there. And to have that, they had that faith in me to mm -hmm. execute the song. And I love Sean Gasway. Everybody knows Sean Gasway. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, yeah, I love him, man. That guy can write, he'll just write songs all day long. I love him so much. <laughs> We've tried to write together. We always miss each other, whatever. But the, mm -hmm. the point is that at the time of my career and the things that um, we're going on at the time, what a, it just spiraled. It just started going and going and going. And I was around the country pushing the song. So, and then shortly after that, you know, when at, we were playing for some other stuff and when Dan died, it was a pretty bittersweet mm -hmm. moment. So the song's very special to me. Well, it's, it's uh, like I said, number one song out there. And of course, uh, people haven't heard it. You've probably been hitting under a rock. I hate to use that expression, but it was, uh, <laughs> it took the world by storm and country music too. And Hey, talk about this because, um, uh, you've shared the stage with so many legends and people that I grew up with and Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard, Johnny Lee, who have had it on this program, two of the Oak Ridge boys who've been kind enough to be uh, here on the program. Oh, Lee and Lee Golden. Isn't he awesome? Matt Sturbin. Sturbin was on that deep voice and uh, yeah. Papa Mau Mau. And, you know, I just saw him in concert over at um, the Golden Nugget back in January okay. Okay. Uh, over at the Golden okay. Nugget in Lake Charles, uh, Louisiana. Um, what, I mean, what's it been like again? John Anderson, the Oak Ridge Boys, Merle Haggard. I mean, just and God rest his soul, and Johnny Lee, who I've had here on this program. I mean, country music royalty. When you stepped on stage with those type of legends, does oh. it just, I mean, just ooze and flow through you? And the memories you have from doing that. 
Well, here's a crazy part. When the Willie Nelson thing happened, I was on the Bill Mack show for you Texas people who know, mm -hmm. actually worldwide, Bill Mack is known. He was the Midnight Cowboy for Charlie. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he wrote Drinking Champagne. He wrote Blue and, you mm -hmm. know, Bills. And he wrote many other tunes. Well, um, I had, uh, I was on Bill's program and he knew my bucket list was Willie Nelson. And um, so I'm on, and he asked me to come cover for him and his, um, his son and his wife had at the time had a show and they weren't going to be in. I can't remember how it happened. Anyways, I was Bill's guest for the day. So it was me mm -hmm. and Miss Mimi, which is, you know, Mrs. Matt, uh, Miss Smith were there. I was in the, on the air with them and the phone rang behind the thing. Like, you know, on radio, like mm -hmm. a red, the red light flashes. So yep. Bill and I are talking and the red light flashes. And I think we went to commercial or something. And Mimi goes, she leans back and she goes, oh, help, help, uh, Bill Mack, whatever. She goes, oh, hi, Willie. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's right here. <laughs> she said, <laughs> I was like, hi, I do yesterday's wine. He's like, I mean, I didn't even say hello. He didn't even write the song. That's how mm -hmm. that was. And he told me he was a fan of one of my songs. He likes my record, blah, blah, blah. And he asked me to come down and be his guest at Carl's Corner. For, mm -hmm. It didn't last very long. And so that's where I got... Um, my first dose of Merle Haggard. I got to play with him again in Arkansas. Sorry, Kansas. Arkansas, Kansas. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, but it all began that night when I, he goes, well, why don't you come down and be my guest? And so I got to, I was supposed to just get up and do yesterday's wine with him. Then I ended up playing fiddle with him and Ruby Jane and the rest of the band. And I, mm -hmm. I finished the rest of the night out with the gospel. So after that, so the, the reason I'm telling you kind of the whole story is because I tell it at my shows because it's funny because mm -hmm. In the middle of the song of yesterday's wine, he didn't like the way I sang it. He looked over at me. He goes, "I was like, okay, because <laughs> I belt, I was belting it. I was going, yesterday is wine. Yeah, and he was like, mm -hmm. yesterday is wine. You know, whatever. But it was um, one of those moments where I'm on stage with my buck, one of my bucket list. You know, I was like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And then shortly after, little things started happening. Like I played with so many legends that are gotten lucky to be paired with them. You know. It was shortly after then Merle Haggard. Oh, so back up. Merle Haggard was there with us that weekend. Uh, but then I ended up being paired with him and John Anderson with mm -hmm. that show I was telling you about. And just to get to, um, okay, hold on. the Merle Haggard thing's funny though, because I'm on stage with Willie Nelson. I'm going on stage with Willie. I've talked to him on the phone, right? And so Merle, we're backstage at Carl's Corner and Merle comes around the corner and he's like right as close as you and I are talking right now, right? Mm -hmm. He walks around the corner and instead of me sticking my hand out and shaking his hand, I threw myself up against the wall and went, Oh my God, it's Merle Haggard. <laughs> like, I did, like I did this. I went like this. I went, I'm Merle, I'm Rachel Stacy. And then of course I got paired with him later and mm -hmm. I got to say Merle, but he wasn't doing very well. So he was kind of high or something, but it was so him and the John Anderson was precious. Um, I'm trying to think of all the ones you said, Oak Ridge boys. Oh yeah. My thing with the Oak Ridge Boys, uh, William Golden stood next to me, and they did sound check. And then we did sound check. Their sound check had all the ear monitors, and my sound check was like blunky monitors and stuff like that. <laughs> and it was so funny because William Golden, um, he stands next to me, and he's like, "You one of them rocking country girls, aren't you?" And I go, <laughs> "Yes, sir." And then he goes, "You play classical violin?" And I was like, "Yes." How did you know? And he goes, because you stand like this, because <laughs> I was standing very upright. And it was so it was like little moments like that. And I was thinking about the Eckridge Boys too, that I didn't have a dressing room. Mm -hmm. And I was underneath the stairs in this crappy part of the building, underneath the stairs, like under the stairwell, with my little compact going, you know, to put my makeup on. <laughs> and they sent their management and brought me to their dressing room wow. and, and their VIP room to get ready. They're so wow. good. Just so good dudes, man. I love it. So great, great guys. And... I have a million stories, but my some of my favorites are that that just to be with the legends. Um, in when you're in it, you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Like my legends are still. I mean, all my friends that get to play with Dolly right now, I'm like, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you know, things the things the bucket lists are still happening. And I always consider myself pretty lucky to get stuck on those shows. I say get stuck, get put on those shows. Get put on. <laughs> well, I mean, also, too, you talk about this and you mentioned um, Jeff Rockwell and, and just Lloyd Maines. I mean, all these great, 
songwriters and Grammy award-winning producers in the industry that you've connected yourself to. And I love the story. Uh, Dan Mitchell, you talked about that too. I mean, just synonymous with those names coming across that to have it cross your path in your career. What, what's that meant to you? When you get, uh, when you're in the studio with people like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm 10 times more nervous because I've, I've, you're under the microscope. Um, but when you get the product that they want out of it, I think at least you, you think um, that's when you, you, I'm a working musician. So mm -hmm. about me, it's about the work because really you guys on stage, that's the fun part. That's yeah. the, that's the commercial. The, the hard part is, you know, I'm watching my friend, Mary Morris. I've known her since she was super young, you know, watching her. I know how much hard work that girl's put into it when people think that it's overnight. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This has been going on for many, 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 many mm -hmm. years. And so those are the guys that weaned me and um, behind the microphone were not easy on me. No, mm -hmm. I think you can do that better. Let's come back. Let's go back. Oh, tell me the story. Um, and then you know you know who they've worked with, so you're even more nervous. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's no, pretty it's, special, though. It's pretty, pretty special, too. I want to talk about a, a couple of songs that really have been – I mean, fan favorites of mine and so many people there too. And then we'll have you, uh, we'll take a break, <clears throat> come back and we'll have you play. I know people are on the margin going, have her play, have her will. We're going to play some, some tunes today. So including a guy, okay, one of my buddies, he, he tunes in from England, all the way over to England. He's tuning in right now uh -huh. too. Still one of my buddies here. So, <laughs> um, so let's talk about this. Uh, damn, you look good. And you do today with the hat. You're very festive. So that's a fitting yeah. title for that. And then um, I think the other one for me, uh, moon turns in let's talk about those two because you've had very good success with a lot of hits out there beside boomerang uh, those are very special for you too both those titles right yep very much when you look at it and you talk about the songwriting and break it down uh great to be involved with some great team members and how did how did those two songs kind of come about tell me the story well the funny thing is damien Look good actually was a fluke it was like mm -hmm. uh i was goofing off my little brother's a rapper <laughs> <laughs> He was at the time. Now you'd be like, what? Um, and I was sitting at the piano and I was kind of like, you know, goofing off of the key of E and I was just kind of, I was like, da, 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 da. damn, you look good. Or that's not even an E, sorry. But I was like goofing off of this sitting at the piano and I was like, I kind of started writing some lyrics and I can't remember the whole story, but my brother started inputting. And then of course the song migrated. I, I still don't know, mm -hmm. but it was about a boyfriend that, um, I constantly was running into and I didn't want anyone else to, I didn't want him, but I didn't want anyone else to have him. And I was like, we all go through that. Everybody's done that. Mm -hmm. Especially a young girl. I'm like, Oh no, no, no. I don't want him, but you can have him. And so my <laughs> brother sat down with me and we wrapped out these lyrics and then we brought one with the studio. Mike Lyons, the producer on it at the time had inputted some stuff for the bridge. And next thing I know it was a single. You see what I mean? So it was never like, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't plan a single. Um, but when I, I wrote the song, um, it was a pretty quick one. Moon Turns In, I wrote with Ruby James, not mm -hmm. Ruby Jane from Austin, but Ruby James. Mm -hmm. And Ruby and I sat up one night, all night, talking about, thinking about all the people in LA that, because I lived in Los Angeles at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, the the song, we started talking about what we wanted to write about. And really, like, if you think of Moon Turns In, um, Into the Sun Again, because yeah. the next thing you know, you're, you know, 80 years old and you never, you didn't finish your dreams. Or I was always told by the, Record Tony Ferguson that used to be with Interscope Records looked at me and he said, let me tell you something. 90% of artists don't make it because of they change careers, um, drug overdose, marriage, parents, uh, I mean, parents, uh, suicide. I mean, mm -hmm. it was kind of naming why we do it. And so that, that's where the song kind of started coming from mm -hmm. where you're like, oh my gosh, I've seen so many people lose their career, mess their careers up from drugs, alcohol, everything else I just told you. And so yeah. the song, I never knew the song would touch people like it did, but it's really deep for me because it's about, you know, I, I do share this with people. I've been sober for 10 mm -hmm. years and mm -hmm. uh, from everything. And, but I watched people truly ruin their careers or die. And so yeah. it, it's a really, it's a lot deeper song than people think it is. It's about aging, but it's about aging in, in the, the field of dreams. You know, I, I hate, I hate it when someone walks up to me after a concert and goes, gosh, I wish I would have stuck with it. I look right at him and go, why can't you do it right now? Mm -hmm. Just do it again. Just start over. You yeah. know, so that's where I get to touch people on just from stories like that. 
Well, it, it, like I said, just many of the fantastic songs that you put out there. And I tell people, uh, check out rachelstacy.com. Some great information there, too. And, of course, tour schedule and things that are out there right now. All right, we'll take a break. And I know all my people here in the margin are telling me, okay, right now we'll do the comments. And David watching from Cumbria all the way in England. So she's going to sing that song and play a little guitar and have a little fun. We'll take a, a quick break here. It is the uh, Backstage Pass, again, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, our good friends at MitchMax.com and over at HankJuniorProductions.com. Oh, yeah, and the giveaway. We're giving away two tickets, the April 2nd show, San Antonio, Texas, uh, Padrati's Ranch out in a little town called Halotus out there. The question is, if you watch the Academy of Country Music Awards Monday night, who won the category for Song of the Year? I need the name of the artist that won it and the name of the song to get a four-pack of tickets and, of course, a meet-and-greet with Wade Hayes. It's Wade Hayes and Rick Trevino, Saturday, April 2nd, San Antonio, Texas, at Pedrotti's Ranch. If you want to win, we're doing that. And plus a couple of meet-and-greet passes with Wade Hayes, a prize pack from each artist, and four tickets. So that's a pretty good prize there, Rachel. So we'll come back and talk about uh, that more, have you perform a song. We'll take a time out for the sponsors. More with Rachel Stacy here on the Backstage Pass. Here's a word from Bangtail Whiskey and Mitch Max. Stay tuned. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass and back here, Rachel Stacy on the Backstage Pass. Uh, check out all the sponsors out there. Bangtail Whiskey at uh, EasyLiquor.com and our good friends at MitchMax.com for official Backstage Pass merchandise and, of course, HankJuniorProductions.com. Again, that trivia question is out there. We're getting ready for a big show coming up April 2nd. Pedrotti's Ranch in San Antonio, Texas. Wade Hayes, Rick Trevino. we got a four-pack of tickets, a meet-and-greet with Wade Hayes, and, of course, a prize pack from each artist. And we'll continue this until we get a winner over the next uh, whatever days, hours remain, or weeks. Uh, who won the Academy of Country Music, the double award there, I say double award, Song of the Year, what artist, and what was the title they won for Song of the Year? And actually, we've had her here on this program, and I shouldn't have said her, but I kind of gave it away there. So uh, you, sure you know did. that, I should have done it, but I did. But hey, everybody didn't have the major network to watch it on, they had Prime Video, <laughs> so some people I talked to got to see it, some people like myself had it right through the PlayStation and and bam, there it is. So <laughs> back here with uh, Rachel Stacy on the program. She knows Texas very well. We know country music very well. And I'm going to turn it over to you. And whatever we're going to play for the audience, it's all yours. So wait, what did you want me to do? Which one? Maybe turns Any of them. You've got so many I could choose. <laughs> <laughs> She's got so many great songs. You choose. Dealer's choice. Oh, thank you. Um, Can you hear me okay? Is this okay? I sure can. Pulling out one of my 20 guitars here. So, um, <laughs> why don't we do Moon Turns In since we just talked about it? And, um, and you guys can see the video on it. It's pretty old, but it's a, it's a goodie. So, goodie. It's written with my good friend uh, Ruby James and produced by Grammy Award winning producer Bo Hill. So, <laughs> you did it on what? You face down the dirt again. This is all. All I can say is I 
Rachel Stacy on the backstage pass here again presented by Bangtail Whiskey and our good friends over at HankJuniorProductions.com and of course MitchMax.com, the official website for backstage pass uh, merchandise out there too. Uh, Moon turns in. We just talked about it. Great performance here on the show too. Hey, I want to ask you about this because a lot of people, you know, kind of uh, you, you mentioned about being being sober there for a long time. Congratulations to you and yeah. how how people take different tracks to get where they're at in any career in life, but especially in music. Um, I know you you had struggled with the depression and 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 things addiction things like that and you've used those past experiences to connect with fans I mean across everything out there your music platform <clears throat> delivering that message of hope lyrics melodies things like that why why was that so important to you I know you went through it yourself but how important is it to give back to those who are affected by those things <sighs> it's really important and that we help, you know, I can't make people that have a problem, you know, quit, but I can be a good example to them. And here's the thing too, the more sober I got in the beginning, especially for me is my lyrics changed. Um, um, I know everything, everything kind of changes. So it's super important for me one day at a time, of course, um, to, uh, maintain, an example of it because I mean not everybody has a problem you know but it's also uh to erase the stigma about addiction and mm -hmm. things like that to show people that just because I don't drink or party like I did because I did it to fit in I thought I was I just thought I needed to fit in mm -hmm. um that I get to be the example that um, I'm still just as nuts. I was telling somebody I go I sometimes don't get invited to parties because people are so worried that <laughs> well she doesn't drink I'm like I'm still just as crazy. I do mocktails all day long. I mean, it's, it's like <laughs> I'm just high on sugar. But it was like I think it's really important to um, show 
other musicians um, mm -hmm. and females, we women, we have a, it's a little harder. That's why I love what's happening in country music right now, mm -hmm. or music in general. Lots of more women musicians, etc. But um, if I can save one person in my whole lifetime and that comes up to me and says, you know, you're my inspiration for getting sober. It's happened time and time again. And I didn't say a word. I didn't tell them. I didn't say you should get sober. Um, Cause not everybody needs to, you know, um, I did, I needed to. <laughs> and how cool that is that um, through my songs, or especially Godspeed, as you know, mm -hmm. Godspeed was a big yeah. kicker for people in recovery, but also it was a big kicker for people um, who don't believe. And yeah. um, so I, I guess I got to be very careful with how I say it, but it, it, I need to maintain what I do by not doing things I did to mm -hmm. create yeah. what I do now for those that might be following in my footsteps. <laughs> there you go. Well said. No, it's well said too. Well, great, great selection of words here. No, doubt. I'm going to go across England here. David has a great comment here. And I love ah. the fact that you always ask a great question because hey, I that's your personal, personal well, baby. And well, my baby, my, my yeah. baby is a Gibson hummingbird. That's okay. so if you look at my shows, you'll see me. And then I play electric with my band, but my, I have a 1979 Gibson hummingbird uh, that I got from John Nelson, which was Eddie Money's guitar player that it used to be Eddie. So that's my baby. You always see me on stage with, but this is kind of my home <laughs> guitar. Um, Taylor, tell him it's a Taylor kind of a jumbo. All right. I like that too. That's yeah, what he had, very personal question always love that we can look behind me and i have many others you might have fun david <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of i'm a kind of a gear girl so i'm like between my stuff i'm the only i think i'm the only one of my girlfriends who's in a techie shop going what does that do how many plugins does it have i mean i'm like such a tomboy so <laughs> i love it dude i love this statement here this uh, sums up a lot of it here yes so do work there you go thank it's you <laughs> oh jesus Picasso. He, he, he a lot of, he takes a lot of pictures. Uh, he's great. He's come to my shows and his mm -hmm. whole family is big supporters and he takes amazing pictures. I see him, all the artists, he does a lot of musicians and oh my mm -hmm. gosh, he's so good. Good, good to see stuff. you, Chris. <laughs> good stuff. Hey, speaking of what you said a minute ago about the, the women of country and now has a chance to meet so many great <clears throat> ladies in Nashville when I was there for the CRS week. I mean, Lainey Wilson, Lindsay L, uh, Alexandra K, Kylie Morgan, uh, Kaylee Hammock. I mean, all these great musicians. I know I'm leaving somebody out too, but it's great to see this movement now of this new wave of women of country, Ashley McBride, Carly Pierce, mm -hmm. doing their thing and sticking to their roots, knowing what type of artist they want to be and knowing their sound and being able to record it, come up with a great song, work with great songwriters, deliver it to fans. This is a pretty cool phase and I want to get your opinion on it because I think this women's division of country now is as strong as it's ever been. It's it's really strong because if you know the whole stories about, about even back in when Dolly, you know, the men fighting over who's going to manage her and or <clears> throat> it's throat> always been kind of male. It's uh, no, that, hold on. it's always been male dominated. I said kind mm -hmm. of it's been male dominated. Um, and uh, it's kind of comforting to now hear the radio and hear, you know, it used to be, as you know, like 20 men songs and two women. So it's yeah. like to be one of the few played and to get one hit wonder as a woman is great, you know, to get to see all these women, I mean, stick into their, you're right, stick into their style. And mm -hmm. I, I'm a songwriter. So it's like, when I get to hear the, them writing to women, the, I don't know, it's, my opinion is it's, it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. It was going to finally happen. Pim, just like Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> it was, was going to happen. <laughs> it's gonna be, women are going to get tired of it, but, um, I have some horror stories that I don't share unless mm -hmm. it's um, needed, but I have horror stories of dealing with men trying to diminish us and wow. just knock us down. And so when Brandy Carlisle and all those, all this stuff started kicking back up, I was like, yes, finally, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'm, who am I to stand up completely? And mm -hmm. cause I've literally been taken off a show. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you who, Mm -hmm. their management said I was too strong. What? Mm. Who? It for your, the, for their male artist. Wow. Well, I'm a female, first of all. And second of all, I have a contract with you. And third of all, they literally were like, or they wanted someone in. But the point is, I'm just saying mm -hmm. they, it, they use the, she's too strong of a female. We need a weaker. They use that. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's no women that are weaker. It's, I didn't like that at all. And it was, it was kind of like, and I've, that's just one small story. There's bigger ones, but 
you know, losing deals because you're not flirting back. I mean, and I'm sure it happens with you men too, but I'm just saying it's mostly with women yeah. and losing deals or uh, venues because you you know it's 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 a tough industry for a mm -hmm. female. I'm a tomboy; I can handle myself, but um, I there's been some times I've really broken down and just like, oh my gosh, when is mm -hmm. this when is this going to stop? And it's not that it's going to stop, but to see this women movement is yeah. I'm beyond. I just I love it, love it, love it. There's some women out there. Now listen to me. I'm going to say this to the camera. Women, stop competing with each other. There's no need to compete. We are. There's room for us all. If we stick together, that there's more room for all of us to help another artist, a younger artist, come up the ranks. Yeah. And there's no ranks. It's just, it's just we've <clears> got to do it for each other. But these men, sorry, some of the men had. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a short story. I got a phone call. It was my second song on the radio. Got a call from my promoter. She's watching my old promoter. She's awesome. I love her. She got a call that I, hmm, I was lying about where I was from. And it was something, something so wild that another promoter had mm -hmm. created a rumor. Wow. Me and another artist were on the same wavelength. It was wild. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Why are we competing? And that's not true. It was so I experienced it early on. And so every, everybody, man and woman have had the horror stories, but to, to see some of the competition created through men mm -hmm. now has given the women time to stand together. And then it kind of creates an example for these men to go, Oh, okay. We don't need to compete. See what I mean? So that's my yeah. whole, that's my soapbox. That's your soapbox. <laughs> well, you know what? That's well said. And I, I'll say this too, because uh, <clears throat> I do represent some artists and book on the side too for, uh, that and some ladies who represent too at the same time. So they want their fair share. And just like everybody else, it's a very competitive business and you understand uh, the, the business side of it. It gives you more of an appreciation for, uh, you know, what you do in, in the music industry and I, your, your talents, I mean, speak for themselves and you've done. Well, I will, let's, I'll tell you this because you're talking about booking. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget. I got here. We sat down with a booking agent and he was a known booking agent and he looked right at me and he goes, um, so females don't do well. So we don't really like to book a lot of females. Uh, they don't put butts in the seats. Yeah. I could not believe what I was hearing. I was like, well, how are we supposed to put butts in the seats if you don't book us and, and give us the time and day? And then I also got told um, there's two big venues back when I first, I guess, first started. I mean, it's really going on tour. Mm -hmm. Literally said their response was, we do not book women. I have been the first woman to play several places all around texas ever like mm -hmm. I, you're the first female i'm like what why am i the first female so it's cool you see what i mean so it's so mm -hmm. cool to see yeah it's not like that it's just not like that because i did get you know women are boring i don't want to hear a woman's voice i'm like wow well get, how are you how are you gonna know if you don't put us in there that's <laughs> put them in the, you can't keep them on the, as a former coach i'd say this you can't keep them on the sidelines you got to put them in the game so it's I don't want to sit on the bench. Coach, no. Let me in. Let me in. No. And as a songwriter, I, I don't need to, I don't always write about love. And some of you have been to my shows. I write about killing people. <laughs> well. I mean, also like Ray, you know, Ray Wiley Hubbard and I uh, mm -hmm. did a four song EP last mm -hmm. year. My songwriting has escalated from experience, not because I'm a female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From, as team members, we're all in this together. So yeah, no, no doubt. And like I said, I'm in it for everybody out there to support it. And I love giving this platform for you guys to stand on. No doubt. Hey, I got to do a little, well, I'll tell you what we'll do before I get to rapid fire. We'll have you play one more for us here since you got that beautiful guitar right there too. And whatever it is, dealer's choice. I know you have a selection of songs that I love so much, including Godspeed and Boomerang and so many others. <clears throat> so definitely um, it's your choice, dealer's choice to take a break with our sponsors. We'll come back and do a little rapid fire and get to know you more on a little personal basis and have a little fun with it and uh, that good stuff. So it's all yours. What are we going to hear? Oh, do you want to hear um, one of the new ones off my new record coming? Let's, let's do that. With Ray Wiley and I? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, all right. Let's do that. This is coming uh only thing you won't hear is the fiddle or Lucas Hubbard <laughs> playing guitar. <laughs> we'll have to get to a show to hear the fiddle. Here we go. <laughs> Just you have to picture it. Take a little time, baby. 
can't you see? We got a line up, settle and free. If we take a little time in a moon that you need. Take a little time, let the worst go slow. Investigate, appreciate this broken world. If we take a little time, we'll show you want some more. If we take a little time, it'll go. here on the backstage pass of course uh, check them out our sponsors at bangtail whiskey easy liquor.com get that great 750 milliliters sent to your door because it'll last you quite some time no doubt and of course uh, mitchmax.com and hang your mean? productions <laughs> it's good stuff right there i love that grittiness and just that great stuff you got in your voice too i love it quick uh, time out we'll come back for a couple of rapid fire questions find out the eating the drinking uh, all the good stuff, collaboration of artists, all that good stuff. Rachel Stacy, it's the Backstage Pass. Here's a word from Bangtail and Mitch Max. Uh, hang tight. The Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McManic, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Hey, I'm back here on the show. A few more minutes with Rachel Stacy here on the program. Don't forget tomorrow, my new newest co-host, uh, CJ Garten, makes his debut here on the show. And, of course, we'll have an outlaw fantasy show here on the backstage pass. We'll talk football and Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz, all these trades, all these things for football fantasy lineups and some gambling in there, too, the combine and a whole lot more coming up on outlaw fantasy tomorrow, which is there with us at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. And tomorrow at 4 o'clock, uh, pleased to be honored. Uh, Thompson Square, uh, Kiefer, and of course, uh, 
his lovely wife, Thompson Square, is going to join us here on the uh, podcast coming up tomorrow here. So we'll talk about what's been going on in their world. And uh, I guess we'll answer that question. Uh, what is it? Are you going to kiss me or not? I guess we'll answer that tomorrow here on, <laughs> on the show. So. <laughs> Are you? I like to throw funny, you know, just you like to throw funny with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> that. Back here presented by Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, MitchMax.com and Hank Jr. Productions. All right. A couple of rapid fire questions I'm going to throw at you, too. All and, right. Uh, still got that ticket giveaway for Pedrotti's Ranch April 2nd for the show with Wade Hayes and Rick Trevino. So, everybody, we'll do the trivia question one more time here in a little bit. Um, favorite food and drink. What do you, what do you get into when you're having one of those rough days? Is there a, a go-to beverage and cuisine? Uh, yes. Uh Mexican Coke and Sugar Babies. <laughs> Love the combination. Yeah. That's the, well, yeah, but Mexican Coke and that UK, I'll go wrong with that pure sugar and that. that I uh, mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it beats the regular stuff. People say, is there a difference? Yes, there's a tremendous difference. I've got a, a meat market I go to, which is a La Paquita meat market. I give them a shout out here in Beaumont, Texas. And you go there, get your barbacoa, you get your menudo, you get everything there with your food. And man, you dig in that fridge and you're like, Mexican Coke. Let me get three of them right there. Put it. And you know what's funny? I feel weird when I go to my favorite Mexican restaurant. I'm like, and they have the Coke. The, they have the canned Coke next to. They barely speak yeah. English. I'm like, Mexican Coke. <laughs> 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 I don't want that Coke. I want the Mexican Coke. <laughs> All right. I love this one. Uh, dream collaboration with an artist or a band. Who would it be? And what stage would it take place on? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well. I would love to collaborate with Chris Stapleton. Mm -hmm. I was very jealous when Cheryl Crow. I was like, let <laughs> me, I'd like to collaborate with her too, but Chris yeah. Stapleton and um, on uh, a Grand Ole Opry. All right. I, I can see it happening. And congratulations to the new male vocalist of the year and at the uh, Academy of Country Music Awards to Chris Stapleton for taking home the hardware. All right, I'll finish on this one. And honestly, we know we're going to have you back when the new music and the new, new album comes out because you've been so just so great today and your smile's Thank beautiful. You. It's infectious. And I love talking <laughs> to you because there's so many questions it is. Um, but I want to ask you about this one. So say you won the lottery tomorrow. What's the first thing Rachel would do with the money? I would donate to Sim. I would definitely give a dollar or two. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would donate. I would, I would, for me, I would give to some of my favorite charities. I don't have just one. I have a few. And then um, I think uh, you talked about giving back to artists. Mm -hmm. I would, if I had the money to back some of these younger artists, um, I would do it in a heartbeat to help them, you know, because it's all about money sometimes in our industry. And there's some talented folks out there, and the only thing they don't have is money behind them. That's it. And like you said, too, well said with that and just knowing the industry. And, and like I said, just knowing who, who's uh, this next wave of women's country is so excited about this. And I tell you, cannot wait for you guys and the new project, new music to come out. Is there a drop date coming up real soon? Well, we're going to do it a little different. This is uh, after talking to the team. Uh, March 20th, we're shooting the video for Trouble, one of the songs off the record. And we're going to release um, kind of single after single. Um, Ray and I did four songs and, mm -hmm. um, I, it's, it's, um, we're doing it different and I'm really excited that way people get excited each song. So drop date for the first one, I'll let you know. So as soon as I know when trouble is going to release, I'll let okay. you know the video is being done March 20th, March 20th. Okay. There we go. Otherwise. Next Stay tuned. Stay, <laughs> stay tuned to Stacy.com and, of course, her own socials and hear us here at the Backstage Pass because hey. uh, she's a permanent fixture now. She's here. <laughs> Yay! Hold on. I do want to say, All right. Randy Carlisle, if you're listening to me, I remember I used to message her a long mm -hmm. time ago. I, this is before I like, I mean, she's, you know, this uh, the story had come out. But Brandy Carlisle, I would message her myself with no management be like, hi, um, I'm just wondering if you and I can collaborate. I would I'd blow her messages up and she would never respond. But it was just, I just want you to know, she's, she would be like my, my big, big one. <laughs> big, big one. Too. Well, I'll tell you what. I tried so hard. <laughs> if we ever get her on this show, Rachel Stacy and Brandy Carlisle come please, together. Like, please, I love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, appreciate the time and always uh, great to get to know you. And thanks so much for, for doing the program and falling in the lines of so many great, uh, Texas artist out there. Rachel, we appreciate it so much and hope you come back again. No doubt. I would I'd be honored and um, I'll wear a different hat. 
<laughs> that's her beautiful just like the violins her smile infectious and the guitars and everything out there rachelstacy.com and of course new music coming up here uh, over the next couple of months we'll keep you posted here on the backstage pass all right one last time for the trivia question who won the category for song of the year monday night at the acm awards and what was the title of the song so the female artist that did it already gave that away and the title of the song two tickets i should say four tickets a meet and greet pass uh, coming up to as well in a prize pack from each artist April 2nd at Pedrotti's Ranch in San Antonio, Texas. We're proud to partner with Full Circle Moments. The event planner out there does a great job with concerts. And uh, Wade Hayes and Rick Trevino live on stage April 2nd at Pedrotti's Ranch. If you leave it in the comment box, I will declare a winner uh, today, tomorrow, or the weekend. Who knows? Like I said, I don't Wait, expect the tickets. Did you say Full Circle? Full Circle Moments, yes, yes. My good you know, friend Marlene Cox. Out, my last album was Full Circle. That's really cool. Full Circle. Isn't that cool how that worked? <laughs> how that worked out? I love it. I uh, love it, man. Love you a lot, too, no doubt. Rachel Stacy here on the program. Uh, check her out, rachelstacy.com. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks to Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and our good friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. We're back tomorrow. Thompson Square on the show, and C.J. Garten makes his debut as guest co-host here on the Backstage Pass. Until then, have a